everybody and welcome to another episode of Cracker Dawn. With me tonight, we have a very special guest. You would notice that the setup is a little bit different. Having a chat with Michaela, who is our administrator all the way from South Africa. Good evening, Michaela. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? We're good, thank you. Uh, there's a lot of technicalities going on in this podcast, um, so please bear with us. If I'm not looking at the camera, um, Michaela is on a different screen that I'm looking at, so if my eyes are drifting, that's the reason why. But yeah, just bear with us. I think it's going to be an exciting episode. So for anybody that's not aware of who Michaela is, Michaela is probably the first person that you will have contact with when you start your journey in finding out about Dawn. Michaela Michaela will send you all the information leading up to a no sweat. And then from that day onwards, Michaela is probably the person that makes the whole business run in the back end. Um, I cannot do a day without Michaela, actually. She, she's been really valuable for us for over the last year or so. So we thought it's a great idea for everybody to meet Michaela and see uh, who she is, what she likes, and um, you know just what her job entails. And hopefully that will shed some light on the name um, on the WhatsApp that you see that always reaches out to you. So Michaela, without any further ado, can you tell us just more about who you are? Um, yeah, and just your history. I know you're in South Africa. Just, just if you want to explain to people where in South Africa you are from, um, yeah, and just a bit more about yourself. Okay, so um, my name is Michaela. Everybody probably knows me by now, except the ones that does not have WhatsApp. Yeah. So they usually just get an email from me or anything like that. But um, so I'm from Pretoria, from South Africa. It's a very little warm city, middle of everything. It's probably the best. It's the best city in South Africa. I'm from Pretoria originally as well. And we always had a joke that, you know, if Pretoria had the ocean, it would be heaven. Um, yes. Yeah, it's the best city, isn't it? Pretoria people are the ones that are like the most down to earth people. You can really just get to know them very well and everything. But uh, yeah, so I'm from Pretoria. I'm 27 years old. I just had my birthday in September. Yeah. And uh, I've, been, I've lived here for all my life, never really, been anywhere else except obviously going on holiday and anything like that and you always you, you've always <laughs> that's fine you um we always uh she's a little bit nervous because uh, she's not always on the camera but um you've always told me that uh although you love Pretoria you're not really a person for the heat you much rather do snow and cold weather and stuff yes. and and you still n never had the opportunity to actually come to Europe but that's maybe something that we can fix in the future yes definitely <laughs> I've, I've only actually been in Israel I've, I've done my volunteer year there after I did school just you know like breaking away before I studied and everything but that's the only place I've been. Otherwise, it's just heat in yeah. South Africa. No, yeah, no. Israel is not the cool, coldest of places either, right? So it's as warm as South Africa, really. So 45 degrees Celsius. That's it. It's, it's a very hot. Area. And um, also in Victoria, also very hot. So tell me more about your school life. Uh, where did you go to school? So I was one of those children who bounced around quite a lot. My parents moved a lot. Uh, so I've actually been in quite a lot of schools, mm -hmm. but the most memorable ones is I was in Mahalis Crane Large School, which is a very large school also. And then I did some private schooling also mm. where I was head girl. Oh. And then, yes, and then I went to Montana High School. I, I, was, I was a, a RCL leader there also. And uh, after that, I studied through um, a very, uh, like the best kind of um, annual behavior and physiology college in South Africa. Yeah. Tell so us. It's very international. Yeah, that, that's quite interesting stuff uh, about that kind of side of you that not a lot of people are aware of. Tell us more about your interest in animals and, y y you know, just, just that kind of part of your, your story. So I, I actually didn't know what I wanted to do after school. That's why I took that little year off and worked in Israel, very hard work, six days a week, nonstop. And mm -hmm. when I came back, I, I had to make a plan. What am I going to do? What is my passion actually? Mm -hmm. And 
for all my life really that I could remember animals were a great part of my passion but when I started studying and I did all my volunteer work at, at the zoo because we also worked at the zoo we did shelter hours and we did training the, hours at vets and stuff this is this is Pretoria Zoo by the way right yes yeah which is like it's probably South Africa's best zoo on par with the London Zoo I've obviously been at both so it's quite a, yeah, a big institution yeah it's a it's a very great zoo and um, after I finished I actually realized that most of the work that you do with animals is more concentrated on actually the owners mm -hmm. so you work 80% with the owners and understanding kind of the psychology of what the owner is doing, how it's impacting the animal. So you're mm. more learning the owner mm -hmm. and guiding the owner to just handle the animal. Okay. So so th there comes the passion in with, with people actually. Mm. So I, I do love working with people. And that's when I noticed, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop with the animal behavior. Yeah. And I'm gonna focus on people. People. If we can fix the people's behavior by default, you can you can help the animals out. Yes, exactly. And do you have any pets of your own? Yes, I do actually have. I have a little dog. Okay. She's called Daisy. Daisy. She's a Tibetan Spaniel and uh, quite, she's a wild card, yeah. small breed, but but she, she runs around and goes through everything almost like she's a large breed. She just okay. goes. Uh, and uh, any, any, any other animals that you have or I know I'm you've not mentioned... Not at the moment, oh, yes. but... I grew up with animals, so I always had horses. I started riding horse when I was seven years old. Mm -hmm. uh, I had my own horse. I also did uh, provincial show jumping of 1.2 meters. Oh, wow. And I did some dressage work. Um, so it was mostly competitions, and uh, that was wonderful. So I did that for 10 years. Yeah. And I stopped after having a back injury. Uh -huh. So that, that kind of stopped when I finished with school and everything. But always animals. Animals, always dogs, yeah. cats, turtles, turtles, birds, everything. Excellent. So I always had animals. Like a Dr. Doolittle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was on repeat. Cat and I had Dr. Doolittle, everything like that. So, um, Obviously, moving forward from you know your childhood in what I know is a lovely, sunny South African city, um, working in the zoo, you know, working with animals, and then obviously discovering that kind of passion uh, and knowing that you want to work with people as well. Um, how how did we end up meeting? Well, you know, how did we get to to the point where I I had an opportunity to interview you online for a job? Okay, so, so I was actually working already mm. at, at a different place, and you stole me from them. <laughs> I did, didn't so, I? Uh, yeah, we we yeah. like we like the term headhunted. We we headhunted you, yeah, uh, so as opposed to stealing me. Yeah. You're uh, with a mutual friend, yeah, uh, but also as a partner with my with my partner. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, said, "Listen, I have this friend." Mm. He he really wants somebody, and I think I think he would be great because we always hear about you and your skills of like managing and doing your spreadsheets and organizing everything. I really want you to please please just send an application, give me your CV, okay. let's just try this. And it, I think it took me about a month and a half to say, okay, maybe yeah. I should really try this. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it with a little, you know not actually expecting anything would happen and and once we had the interview i knew yeah i knew the the south african and london I yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and obviously for for our members as well just the the back back story of this was um uh, leading up to Michaela joining us uh what well, it's now been over a year it was last year september wasn't it so yeah, for, for over a year now, um, you've been on board. And I think if you, you've you been a member before, there's there's a clear date before Mick and after Mick, basically. Before Mick, it was always chaos. Uh, people were always struggling to get a hold of me. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and obviously um, our, after Michaela, things have really kind of just settled. And for me, it was always understanding that or making the realization that for me to be the best person I had to be is I had to kind of get rid of administration and stuff, which is, is really something that kind of drags me down. I've never been good at those kind of, uh, you know, things. I'm way more creative, way more just uh, sociable. And I needed somebody, and we've we've always tried to have other people um, in the business. Uh, it just never really clicked. It just never really worked. Um, and then 
yes, uh, a mutual friend contacted me and, and he said like he had this business, this international business thing. And I, you know, and I said to him, that's a great idea. Do you have an admi administrator for me? <laughs> and he goes like, I don't, but I can find one. And then obviously he went and found you for us. So, um, uh, yeah. And I remember that first interview, I think I had about three, he, he gave me about 25 applicants and then we chose that's probably the back end that you didn't hear but then then i chose three cvs and then he arranged three interviews and uh you you were my last one for the day and uh i actually already made it up my mind with somebody else i thought oh this woman it was going to be dynamic and she was like um you know she's so good and then i had the interview with you and it was just yeah the moment we got off off the phone i knew they had to be you. You clicked well. You either you actually found me funny or you pretended to find me funny, but that really worked because you laughed at all my jokes. Um, and, uh, I laughed <laughs> yeah, yeah, because laughter <laughs> prevents you from crying at my jokes, I guess. Um, but yeah, so and, and and it was it was quite quick after that that we actually got the contract signed and you started working for us. Um, and I think it was five days. Five days. I I, I actually worked a double job while I started with you. I remember um, you saying to me like and yeah, everything. That's it because we had to and, and that that was quite stressful. We came out of a, a long obviously lockdown on this side as well um you know and, and we had my wife louise help us out a little bit and then once you got on board i remember because you still had to work, work notice at the previous job and yes. start working for us at the same time so juggling two full-time jobs and learning everything it, and it was a very steep learning curve for you you know i remember in the beginning there was a, there was a lot of stressful days of, yeah very late meetings very online i think about two or three meetings very late at night after my other job yeah. quickly doing a two hour shift with Louise and That's like it. learning the system and what to do and yeah. but yeah. but we are so thankful we're so grateful for you for you I think um yeah up until now you've you've just absolutely helped us and um I'm sure all our members will agree as well that um it's it's made a massive difference for us so thank you for your work so far it's, oh, it's, a, it's a pleasure it's <laughs> it's a it's a big pleasure excellent what is a normal day for Michaela looks like when, uh, you know, from the, the time you get up, because obviously now with the clocks changing, you're two hours ahead of us. So I think while most people are still in bed, you're, you're already working for us. Um, and then just, yes, just talk us through like what's your, what's your job spec? What does a typical day look like? So yes, it's quite great now that the, the clock has changed a bit because I do get a little, uh, an hour extra in the morning to sleep. <laughs> But I do usually, I, I do wake up quite early. You know, sometimes I, I'm, I'm a bit scared that I bother members too early. I'm very already going, yeah. getting everything set for the day, planning everything that has to be done from the previous night. And usually uh, by that time I have 30 messages on WhatsApp. So wow. I start working through them. <laughs> okay. I, and what, what, does, what does those messages entail? Like, what, what's the spectrum of this kind of messages that you wake up to? Let's let's shed some light on this. Let's see what that's all about. Oh, no. Okay. So it's, <laughs> it's usually a, a, a late cancellation mm -hmm. or it's a, a... You don't want to drop anybody in it now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes, uh, it's a late cancellation. It's anything to do with, oh, I need to quickly just change a clause. Um, I found out about this specific course or anything. Can you please send me information about that? Mm -hmm. Or um, I need a goal review. Mm -hmm. um, I have somebody that maybe wants to come for a no sweat session. Can you please send me any information about that? Or, right. oh, no, when is Orange available? I need a meeting with him. Uh -huh. So then I quickly go to the calendar and I'm like, oh, quickly do puzzle work yeah when can i quickly put them in and listen just just this thing just you being a uh, pretty much default pa for me is just worth every penny <laughs> of your salary because um i don't know most of you as members already know that i'm terrible with booking appointments like jose's just been like nodding in the background <laughs> as we speak um <laughs> But yeah, since you've been managing my diary, uh, it's it's so much easier for me to just uh, like open up and know exactly what I've got to do. You know, those double bookings and those no shows has definitely disappeared. So um, I'm always grateful for that. And I know you always wake up to one or two of my very late night 
<laughs> moments of thought. Oh, Michaela, can we look into something like this maybe? Or what do you think about maybe we should be doing this this way? And this is usually like a, a 12 p.m. UK time. And, you know, and then yes, you, you're fast asleep the next night while you're sending it. Yeah. And then uh, by the time I wake up, you've already thought of something or you would have my diary ready for me. And, uh, yes. and, and she's, <laughs> you've learned how to read me because I'll have my diary that I can access myself. And then Michaela will actually send me a message listing my whole diary for me on the day as well, because she knows she, I don't check my diary. So, uh, yes. yeah, well so done I, for I can her. I never guarantee that he will show up. But what <laughs> I do, what I do is I do send him a, a daily every night saying what's happening the next day That's right. and then when the morning comes as soon as i'm in the office i quickly set up an entire list say okay aren't that time you need to be there doing this <laughs> yeah. and then sometimes when i really think okay maybe you're going to forget about a phone call and i quickly send you another message during the day and say just just remember you have to call this person and have you yeah. called them or this is, and that's amazing and then i'll be kind of like of course i've called them and then the one day that you don't remind me i go like Oh, I forgot to call this person. Can you reset another meeting? So, yeah, just thank you for that. That's uh, already valuable. So, right, you'll be fielding messages. You'll be looking after my diary, which is already a job within itself. Uh, what other kind of roles, uh, you know, do you kind of work through on a daily basis? So I, I book the goal reviews and catch up calls, and mm. I also confirm all the no sweat sessions booked. Mm. I move any meetings. I do assist Jackie with any customer, uh, any messages, anybody that wants to kind of change their memberships. Maybe they can't come anymore, mm. or they want to, you know, maybe there's an injury or anything like that. So I help. Um, she does send me those messages, mm. and then I do reply to them. I talk to mm. the people, Excellent. organize everything on the systems for them mm -hmm. and then also all the classes i am the one that puts it in the system saying which coach does every single class yeah and uh um, so i also do plan out the routers and yep. make sure that you know all the coaches are available for their sessions or mix yeah. mixing everything up and seeing who's gonna who's gonna do the next weekend or yeah and also on, on top of that you also help the coaches book their personal training sessions and everything else so you know not not, not just myself but you also like um help them and are a bit of a administrator and personal assistant to the coaches as well so yes. what a phenomenal job that is so far and that's not even the reporting the weekly reports that we all ask for and you know, or can you revisit these figures or do you have that person's phone number? Um, yes, who's not coming in for the week? Who has to come in? Yeah. Who, any, anybody missing any classes? Who's being naughty and not pitching up for classes? Oh, yeah, we've got to talk about those little no-shows, right? So, which is actually a really good opportunity to talk about um, leading to my next question. Um, what is probably the worst part? Let's start with the worst part. What's probably the worst part of your job? And remember, you're talking to your boss now, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the worst part for me is, mm. um, well, actually, the best part for me is, is being um, useful. I yeah. love getting those messages where I, I'm in need of a change of a class. I can't make it. Something happened. Um, mm. Any, any, uh, anything that I can really help with. Any, anybody loves to feel valuable to people. Mm. So that gives me a lot of excitement being able to help a person within a few minutes. So you can really okay. rely on me to, you know, if it's not after hours, let's yeah, say it's yeah, past yeah. eight o'clock at night, yeah. but I would really, within five minutes, I'll sort anything out for you. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are, or if you're not even part of the box, but I'll be there. And yeah. the worst thing for me is, but. <laughs> But it's it's part of everything. Is the is the message for the late cancellations on no show? <laughs> the no shows and late cancels. I think that's the worst worst part. I think that's the bane of our life and our system is trying to to be as effective yes. and as quick with those as we possibly can be. Um, yes. I think also in the last few uh, months things have gotten a lot better. Am I right in thinking it's gotten a lot better, or am I just yes. ignoring it? Yeah. No. No, it is. It yeah. is. Um, so, is yeah, just as for, for you as members as well, thank you so much for actually helping us out. It is it is stressful for Michaela because she does brunt 
or bear the brunt of all the customers. You know, when I am very much the good cop and I, I give you very much the, the bad cop job to kind of chase people up, you know, especially on no shows and stuff. Um, but yeah, we, we have obviously gotten a lot better with that. And I, I think people understand as Dawn is growing now that, you know, we really need to, our spaces and the classes are always going to be sacred and needs to be protected um, and not just to cancel for, for the sake of it. So, Nice note to the members. Winter is coming. It's going to be be cold. Uh, Don't just no-show because it's too cold and you can't be asked to get out of the bed. There is a legitimate reason for you not to be able to make a class. Please, please, please do let Michaela know as soon as you possibly can. It just makes our jobs a lot quicker and then possibly we can get somebody else into that class uh, that has been on a waiting list. Great. So if that's the the, the best part um, and the worst part, how do you... um, So working with Jackie is not a bad thing then, is it? No, I love Jackie. She's very nice. She's, yeah. She she has that proper accent, that proper English accent. Or, I, it's always so nice to talk to her. So she, and that's another thing does. for us as well. It's just, uh, you know, although we get taught English in South Africa from quite a young age, you know, we do have our way of speaking English. There's, there's a lot of mannerisms yeah. and things that we use. Obviously, both of us are native Afrikaans speakers. So there is a bit of loss of or inflation sometimes. So um, well done for, for dealing with that as well. Yeah, especially when that when that yaw comes in when it's supposed to be a yes. Yes, yaw. Yaw, yaw. <laughs> Excellent stuff. <laughs> Michaela, um, then, yeah, let, let's start thinking a little bit about the future. Um, if we start looking towards the next couple of years, where do you see yourself perhaps within the business? What would you like to see yourself uh, growing to with Dawn, perhaps even after Dawn? What, what's your game plan? My game plan is it, I've always been very interested in businesses. So um, having, let's say, like a, a share or partnership or anything like that, I've always wanted to own or create kind of like a business Mm. so I love my work I wouldn't I wouldn't give it out at all so, so my plan is to to stay as yes, as long as everybody wants me. And then there. start start a little bit of a side hustle and 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 then see how yes. that goes. Yes, yes, yes. So anything where you can invest in mm. create something that you can hold. So it's not to say I'm going to put money away and give it to an investment mm. and let it grow there, but to actually see and hold where your money goes. Yeah. And so be part of the process of it. So even if it's as a as an example kind of uh, a very big thing in South Africa is if you own a piece of land and you have storage units on it yeah um, which is a great money to make uh, on our side but yeah. just something that you can be a part of it's something that you can create yeah or even if it's like a shopping center or anything like that and you have an idea of what you want to create what types of shops you want there yeah. who you want to bring into that that it, that is definitely the That's end result is to have something of your own also okay. I'm sure that I think when when the opportunity presents itself, you'll be uh, you would rise to that occasion the, the same way you did to to help us. And um, with all the knowledge that you've learned from us, you will be able to definitely um, use that in your future ventures. I'm personally thinking about maybe just you know starting a dawn in Pretoria, maybe you know, and uh, just do the same thing, but just do it in a sunny country, you know, and maybe do some coach coach exchanges and and have a holiday place okay. or perhaps just have a place for you in, in the cold to come and visit so we could just swap year yeah. on year and see how things go <laughs> so i could i could swap with somebody on your side yeah. <laughs> and, I could, and then, I, then i have that side and then somebody can run this side also that makes just sense swap every year <laughs> yeah. michaela we um, have a lot of crossword uh boxes here sorry so there's only about two in the area yeah. So you don't really see crossfitters walking around or, you know, running around the circles, around the block. And <laughs> I can see that a lot on the videos. They're running around doing the exercises. But here it's mostly yeah, yeah, yeah. cyclists or... This is a great opportunity for us. It's a great opportunity. Might, might, that might just be the subject of our next next meeting. 
Michaela, yes. thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we really appreciate this. Um, I know it's it's quite late for you already in South Africa. And I think I speak for everybody in Dawn when I say that you're such an asset to the company. You make everything work. Uh, you know, you're, you're kind of like the cogs and the wheels in the background that nobody really sees, but, but really make sure that everything kind of falls in place. Um, and the success that we've been experiencing over the last year is a direct kudos and thank you for the effort that you've put in. So um, yeah, thank you so, so much. And also to the members, now that we have a face behind the messages, there's a bit more of a person there. So it'll be nice to say thank you, or perhaps every now and again, just ask how you are doing as well. Um, and, and just remember that there's somebody working really, really hard halfway across the world uh, to make your membership flow really easily and um, yeah, and make everything happen at dawn. So. Michaela, from, from myself and from Dawn, buy a buy a donkey. Um, thank you for everything. Yeah, thank you for everything you do for us. Um, and hopefully we will soon see you soon again. Yes, definitely. Excellent. Thank you for watching this. I think this is quite valuable now that we know who Michaela is and what she does for us. Hopefully that will help us also just reach out to her and appreciate the work that she does for us. Hope to see you guys soon. Please like and subscribe. Also, Michaela has mentioned the goal reviews that she so eagerly book. Make sure if you haven't booked a goal review just yet, leading up to Christmas is crucial for us. We want to see all of you uh, with a goal review for Christmas so that we know how we're going to tackle the new year. So you know your plan and we can create that kind of consistency. Until next time, we'll see you soon.